The victorious Musketeers are with us. Jalen Reynolds, James Farr, Trayvon Blewett, Remy Abel represent the student body of Xavier. Head coach Chris Mack will start off the proceedings with a statement on the game, and then we'll go to questions for all five gentlemen on the dais. Chris, please. Coming into the game, we had uh, tremendous respect for Weber State. Um, you know, you watch them play on film, and it becomes apparent that their front court uh, is a high major front court in terms of their size. And, you know, Ballenby is, or Ballenboy, I should say, is a guy that, uh, you know, dealt with double teams all year. He shows athleticism in the first two minutes of the game on the baseline dunk, and, uh, you know, our ability to, to really um, you know, keep him in check for the most part assert our will on the glass, you know, to out-rebound the team by 16 in an NCAA tournament game isn't easy to do. And then the other thing that was really, really important coming into this game was being able to chase uh, Jeremy Singlin, uh, not let him catch uh, off staggers, a la Reggie Miller. And this guy to my left, Remy Abel, did a tremendous job. I don't know if Singlin worked harder uh, in his career to get seven points than, than he did tonight. Um, but you don't do that without, with, without great effort. And I'm really proud of this team. Uh, our seniors, especially, really stepped up. You know, uh, for James Farr to have 15 rebounds in a tournament game, and like I said before, Remy's ability to to chase defensively w was was tremendous. Very fortunate, excited to move on. Start right here. Remy, uh, about that defense. Jeremy Singlin averaged about 18 points coming in and was held to seven. You always draw the, the, the top player as, a, as Xavier's best defender on the ball. Talk about your approach tonight and, and how key that was to really keep him in check. Um, yeah, like Coach said, um, you know, we did a, they did a great job preparing us and um, preparing us to play them. And um, like I said, I just want to stay focused, stay locked in. Um, obviously, he's a great player. You know, he averages 18. And um, like I said, I just want to make it tough on him. And even though... Um, I was guarding him. This is a team effort defense. So, you know, my teammates did a great job. If I had a, um, a lapse of, um, you know, letting him drive, you know, James made a big block. Or um, So, like I said, um, yeah. Continue. James, monster night for you. Um, it, you played like a senior that didn't want to go home. Will you talk about kind of your mindset heading into this game and how you were able to exploit um, some opportunities there close to the basket? Well, I think you said it perfectly. I didn't want to go home. Um, you know, I just wanted to be able to set the tone and have my teammates uh, be ready to set the tone uh, for the first game of a tournament for us. You know, um, we're glad to get this win, but we know we're nowhere near our goal. And um, we just want to keep getting better every game. Front row, gentlemen. Um, question for all of you. Um, curious how um, Weber State compares to team that, teams that you've played in the Big East, um, just on all levels. We'll have Jalen answer first and Trayvon second. I would say um, boxing now, they kind of compare to Villanova in, in a way. Um, obviously, Ballon Boy, um, being in that paint is, 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 a, is a big presence, and we want to make sure we keep him off the glass. And um, to the best of our ability, and uh, that's what we did tonight. Uh, you know, they're a pretty good team. You know, they uh, if they were in our conference, they could probably compete with, you know, every team in our conference. Uh, they got two really good guys in uh, Singlin and Ballin Boy, and, um, you know, they're pretty physical, and I think they, you know, fit well in the league. On the aisle. Uh, everybody can answer this question except for Jalen. Who wins a dunk contest, Jalen Reynolds or the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> All right, we're going to go Remy, Trayvon, and James in that order. Um, man, I would have to go with uh, Jalen. I've never seen him dunk, Incredible Hulk. So, yeah, Jay, I got you. Yeah, you know, being a good teammate, I'm going to have to go with Jalen, too. So, uh, you know, I mean, if Incredible Hulk could dunk, that would probably be impressive. I want to see it from my own eyes. Yeah, I'm going to have to piggyback off those two and uh, say Jalen. He might, he might be mad at me for a week if I don't choose him, so <laughs> I'll choose Jalen. Right here. Hey, Juan, uh, how locked in were you guys in today to what your own planning was? Um, and I ask that because there was a big upset, uh, a 215 on the same court earlier today. Did you know about that heading into this game? Um, yeah, I mean, we watched the game earlier and uh, we saw that. So, you know, that kind of made us, you know, want to be even more locked in just because those type of games can happen. And um, 
you know, we kind of changed our defensive uh, strategies a little bit. So we had to be, um, you know, even we're locked into that. So I think we were pretty, you know, focused. Stay. Jalen, every time they came within seven, you guys had an answer, whether it was a, you know, a jumper or one of your dunks. Can you talk about that and be able to really kind of stave off anything closer than that gap of seven points? We just want to just keep getting stops, uh, stop trading baskets. Um, them obviously getting the ball inside was our biggest uh, deal. Obviously, we want to uh, trap that and uh, not let him um, go one on one or get any easy buckets. Um, but yeah, they kept going seven points, so we just want to get stops and uh, keep answering back and um, making making shots tonight. On the aisle here. Uh, one of your defining traits all year has been your ability to get to the free throw line. Today you only had four free throw attempts, but you still were able to win. Is that something that, like, going into the Wisconsin game, you're going to need to be more aggressive attacking the basket, or do you just think it was just one of those days you weren't getting the calls? Chris, you want to take that one? Uh, I would just say that uh, a lot of that had to do with Weber State. Um, they, don't, they don't get extended at all. You know, in ball screen situations, it might be the only team on a pick and roll that defensively doesn't involve a third player. Um, you know, that's why we had uh, the ability at times to get all the way into the lane. We missed a few floaters from three or four feet with our guards, but our bigs, uh, for a majority of time, were able to get behind the roll man. Um, so in answering your question, it's a very difficult team to put fouls on uh, because, again, they don't get very extended. They play soft. On the perimeter, we got to the bonus earlier in the in the second half than we did in the first half, um, but yet all the buckets that we seemed to score were either step in threes or layups at the rim where we didn't get fouled. So uh, I don't think we were unaggressive in any way, shape, or form. We're going to continue to play the same way offensively, and you know you've got to uh, you dictate a little bit by how defensively they play you, and that was what they chose to to do and how they've done it all year, and that's why they've been a pretty good egg on the defensive team. Back over here. Chris, did you have a chance to watch any of that first game, and do you have any preliminary thoughts on Wisconsin? Uh, I only watched maybe a couple minutes when I walked out of the tunnel. Um, th there's no need for, for me to watch the game until we, we, we advance. So uh, I, I don't want to get caught up in you know, watching styles of play or plays. We, we had our own focus with Weber State. Um, I think Trey hit, hit the nail on the head when he said we made a few defensive adjustments. We trapped the post, which we rarely do. Uh, we had Trey and Kaiser uh, jumping out on ball screens. They've switched all year. I was really proud of these guys for being able to make the adjustments that we felt like we needed to make in order to win the game. But no, I didn't watch any of the game. All the way back on the right standing. Thank you. Chris, I'm just curious. Did w when you saw Michigan State fall on this two seed like you guys, did you? How did you use that? Did you remind your players that this is something that happened, or did you even mention it at all before your game? They're, you know, they're pretty smart guys. I don't think I have to mention the, the two seed lost. They, they watched the games. Um, you know, it, it's it's why people tune in, you know, to the NCAA tournament because upsets happen all the time, but. Uh, I felt like our team, uh, from the very minute we drew Weber State to the moment we watched tape on their personnel, to the moment we went over their actions, uh, th there wasn't a guy that was, that was yawning, that wasn't paying attention. That's how this group's been all year. Um, and so I, I didn't necessarily worry about uh, a letdown. I did worry about Weber State playing at a high level because they won three games in three days. They're the best team in their conference. They had won 26 games coming into the year, or coming into the tournament. So that, that was our only focus. You know, we can't control anybody else that wins or loses. And, um, you know, we're just very, very happy that we're advancing. Anything else for the Musketeers? All right, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow.